Let's start with programming note. I'm changing the posting time on Saturdays to 8 p.m. Central Time. I think that this will be a better time to post and give me more room to produce better videos. In the Kitchen will not be a live stream this month. I really am not good at lining up guests yet, and I didn't get one. Instead, I will talk about something which touches close to home for me, and I will give you my opinion on a related matter. I'm not trying for a balanced approach today. This isn't another roasted opinion where I try to understand both sides of the issue. I won't be using a lot of clips to make this video either. This is just me talking. I grew up in Iowa. It really is an amazing place if you like pastoral places. The gently rolling hills covered with fields of corn and soybeans, the gentle hum of the cicadas on a summer's evening, waking up in winter to a blanket of white drawn up over the brown grasses and bare earth, looking like the world is clean and pure for a moment. This is Iowa. The state fair waiting in the rivers to catch fish, searching for geodes along the banks, smelling the dusty scent of a coming rain, feeling the moist earth so dark that it looks like potting soil in your fingers when planting a garden of flowers. This is Iowa. Small towns with hidden gems of culture, cities large enough to be filled with places to go and things to do, but not so huge that there are no-go zones in them, never being more than 30 miles from a college or university or more than 10 miles from the next town. This is Iowa. It is the field of dreams, the beautiful land, the land between the two great rivers, the setting for Antonin Dvorak's Symphony from the New World, in which I believe that one can hear the sounds of Iowa outside the Billy Brothers' shop where he stayed while writing it. It was also the home of Molly Tibbetts until about a month ago when she was murdered. Brooklyn is one of hundreds of small towns in Iowa. It's fairly typical for this state, less than 2,500 residents, nestled among thousands of acres of farmland, part of a school district which encompasses three communities. John Wayne lived there for a while as a boy before his family moved to California. The town proudly displays the flags of all 50 states near the historical museum. It's a kind of town where people can leave their front doors open on a balmy spring day, with just the latch on the screen door tripped and let the ever-present breeze blow through their house and air out after a winter closed up against the cold. It's not where anyone would expect trouble from taking a jog alone, not even a pretty college student. Everyone knows everyone in such a town. The community is tightly knit to the extent that a sneeze elicits a quick God bless you from anybody, and a serious illness prompts half the town to drop in with casseroles and offers to help out. When the kids are outside playing, their parents don't have to worry about them. Everyone looks out for everyone else's kids and mischief makers are scolded and sent home with a quick phone call to let their parents know what trouble they made. I know that some people are wondering why a co-ed would jog along along farm roads. My answer is that in towns like Brooklyn, there is no expectation of danger in that. I used to go for long walks along country roads as a kid, sometimes for a couple hours at a time, and never once had a problem. Mom knew where I was and could find me in less than five minutes. The local farm families knew me too, and I could have jogged up to the front doors if I ever needed help. I could tell you where the Halversons lived, and which farm belonged to the Fjellens, and how far it was to the Yortzois. I knew in which pastures the wild berries and mushrooms grew, and which families didn't mind me picking some of them. Brooklyn is like that. So is Slater, Manning, Walford, Woodbine, Earlham and dozens of other Iowa towns. Molly's killer has confessed, but that doesn't assuage the grief of her family or restore the ideal of the town. Parents will hug their kids tighter at night and keep them close to home. The Tibbetts family has asked that the discussion about this murder not be politicized, and I understand that sentiment. They need time to grieve without being asked by every reporter hoping to make their career for their thoughts on what happened, who Molly was, or about immigration. It's too late, though. I won't be one of those reporters priding into their lives, but I will talk about the murderer. You see, he was here illegally. He came into the United States from Mexico as a child. He never learned much English. 
He got a job using falsified papers and worked on that farm for four years without a hint of a problem. Then, one day, he spotted Molly. We don't know how long passed between the first time that he saw her and the day that he killed her. We don't know if he harbored a secret obsession for her or if he was mentally ill or how long ago we could have spotted that illness and treated it if he had had access to medical care the way a legal immigrant might have had. We do know, though, that he could have been a poster child for DACA until that day. Immigration reform probably would not have saved Molly's life. He was already here, and until the investigation, no one, not even his employer, knew that he was illegal. Reforming the immigration system would not have changed that one bit. Nothing about this heinous crime can be undone. But we can and should fix the system. We owe it to the nation to do so. We owe it to the millions of Americans who came to this country legally from other places, including Mexico and Central America. You see, acts like this divide the nation more. They create more suspicion of the Latino community, most of whom, in my experience, are good people and don't deserve this suspicion. I'm not opposed to people immigrating to America, but immigration needs to be controlled. Applicants need to be vetted to filter out those with criminal histories. We need to create a better system. I know that the border wall is not universally popular. Putting up a physical barrier along the U.S.-Mexican border will be very expensive, and monitoring that border fence will still require numerous agents. Some would even argue that putting up a fence across the deserts of the southwest is pointless. The desert is a formidable natural barrier already. What good would a wall do if hundreds of miles of desert won't stop border crossings? Well, it would provide another formidable barrier which supports security cameras. That would certainly help Border Patrol agents spot illegal crossings. We can't just close our borders, though. America is a land of opportunity, and nearly everyone who lives here can claim at least partial descent from another place. We, the descendants of past immigrants, have to provide a way for immigrants present and future to come in legally, with a minimum of red tape and practical limits to the number of people allowed to immigrate each month. Apply at any port of entry, consulate, or embassy. I believe that reasonable standards should be set. Welcoming in those who are able to work in order to meet the needs of the labor market makes perfect sense. Thus, indexing the number of people that we allow in each month to the labor force participation published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics each month makes perfect sense. Checking people's backgrounds to make sure that we aren't letting criminals in also makes sense. Placing limits on how many from each country doesn't. Although temporarily embargoing immigration from specific countries which have a significant problem contributing to that vetting process does. Refugees should be welcomed, but checking to see if they are refugees solely because of economic reasons also makes sense. Economic reasons alone should not be enough to grant entry as refugees. We should welcome people from any country who are willing to become part of American culture. I believe that America is the greatest nation in the world, and I understand anyone wanting to become an American. But, to me, one should want to become a citizen if one wants to live here. One should accept American culture, learn to speak the dominant language, English, as the lingua franca of everyday interactions. Learn American history, the civil rights of our citizens, and the civic duties which attend those rights. Immigrants should not attempt to superimpose the laws of their country of origin upon our laws. Immigrants should accept the authority of the Constitution as the supreme law of their adopted land. Immigrants should not attempt to institute any sort of religious law system on the citizens of their adopted nation. Illegal entrants should be returned to the country of origin or to the closest country which will accept them if that is impossible. Let them come in legally. If there is no other reason to bar them but that they didn't come in legally, then let them apply for re-entry without preference or penalty. If they have children who have been born in America and are thus American citizens, then instead let us conduct the vetting process here and make a final determination on their status based on whether we should have allowed them to immigrate lawfully in the first place. Let us not deport and permanently bar entry to anyone who poses no threat. Rather, let us deport those who have committed crimes, which would have been crimes if they were citizens. 
This is my version of amnesty, and I would see it extended only to those who entered before the reform measures were instituted. These measures would open our borders somewhat. I don't have a problem with opening the borders. There are so many good people who want to be Americans and cannot enter because of entry quotas. I also don't have a problem with providing a path for illegals to legitimize their status because I believe that will improve the country as well. I believe that employers who are deliberately hiring illegals to work for them should face penalties for doing so. And I believe that the first penalty thus imposed should be to sponsor their immigrant employees and their families as they legitimize their status so that they bear the cost of this process instead of the rest of the country. And no, I don't think that this should be optional if it can be proved to the satisfaction of the courts that the employer knew or should have known that their employees were here illegally. I think that immigrants sh should take a citizenship exam to demonstrate that they are ready to become Americans before they are naturalized, and I believe that the American people should provide the classes which immigrants need to prepare for the citizenship exam at our cost. Consider this an investment in our future citizens. Until and unless they gain citizenship, though, I believe that they should be unable to access government benefits for which they have not paid. A working immigrant pays taxes so they should have access to public assistance for basic needs like food, shelter, and medical care. The only requirement which I would impose upon this would be that those who are drawing benefits must be enrolled in citizenship classes. Federal student aid would not be available for non-citizens, as a college education is not a basic need. Neither would any home buying program or public research grant, for that matter. I like that immigrants with a green card can join the U.S. military and earn their citizenship. In my opinion, a willingness to die for this country is more proof than many citizens give of how much these immigrants love this land. I would only ask that they be in this country lawfully first. As for DACA, it needs to be stricken from the books. The judiciary must stop trying to keep DACA in place. Congress must pass new law which ends this program forever and the President must rescind any executive orders which sustain it. Of the three branches of government, I have only seen one do what needs to be done in this matter. Molly's death was a horrible crime. It needs to be handled as we would any other murder, and we should not invoke her name against the wishes of her family. Show them the same respect that you would want if it was your daughter who was murdered. As a separate issue, though, we need to fix immigration law in this country. Now! Not later, not in a decade under a different president, not when we have a sympathetic Congress and more judicial appointments. Now. The price for not doing so is just too high in every measure. Now that's just my opinion and you don't have to agree with me. In fact, I'd love to hear what you think, so go ahead and give me a like or dislike and comment below. If you like this content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe and make sure that you ring the notification bell. New episodes of Roasted Opinions post on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Join me on the last Saturday of every month in the kitchen. New content is coming, so watch this space.